and welcome back to chapter four, Accrual Accounting and the Adjustment Process. This is learning objective number two, prepare adjusting entries for prepayments. When talking about prepayments, we really need to talk first about expense recognition. Friendly reminder that under accrual accounting, expenses are recorded when they are recognized. That is when the expense is incurred. So in the instances uh, that we have a prepaid asset, then we would decrease that asset when the expense is incurred, or um, we decrease cash when the expense is incurred, or we increase liabilities. And most often, uh, really, we're incurring expenses to drive a company's revenue generating activities. So as an organization, we incur expenses to earn revenue. As I briefly mentioned, these are tied to assets and liabilities, just depending on what type of expense um, it is and what happened before. In IFRS, that is in International Financial Reporting Standards, we are always looking to reflect the economic reality of the transaction. However, in other accounting frameworks, they might say the words matching. So that is, when do we match the expense to the revenue? Now, under IFRS, you could likely get away with using this turn of phrase, at least intuitively. However, when you get to senior level accounting classes, just never say matching expenses and revenues when talking about the International Financial Reporting Standards framework. But if you wanna think, well, how am I earning the revenue? When does the corresponding expense incur? You can do that um, for now. All right, so adjusting journal entries. This means that there are accounting entries to adjust or update accounts at the end of the period. So the end of the period is whatever you are reporting on to your users. It might be a quarter uh, or it might be a year. It rarely would ever be like a week or a day because then you would just be doing a bunch of work to go through this entire process, uh, but rather end of the period typically quarter, maybe a month, um, but a quarter or a year. These are required because the economic reality of a company might be such that you prepay for a bunch of expenses, say like for insurance at the beginning of the year, and then you report your financial statements quarterly. Well, by the next time you report, you'll have used 25% or three months worth of your expenses, your prepaid uh, insurance expense. So you need to reflect that passage of time. You need to reflect that economic reality that you've used up 25% of your insurance and still have 75% left. So this is when I talked about at the beginning, and I'll just kind of scroll back, how we go from preparing the trial balance to really journalizing um, post-adjusting entries. How do we capture that passage of time, that use of economic resources? Well, <coughs> excuse me, um, we do so here through adjusting entries. Listen, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Um, if you'd like, you can take a peek. Some items are not recorded daily. <laughs> some are, um, some, Economic uses um, reflect aren't reflected through cash. Um, sometimes we need to make a guess, so we have to make accruals. But regardless, we need to have these adjusting entries to make sure that our trial balance before we create the financial statements really do reflect the economic reality of where that company is, where that organization is at the end of the period. So in general, we have four different types of adjusting entries. We have prepayments, and within prepayments, we have prepaid expenses and deferred revenues. So prepaid expenses would be something like insurance. We debit prepaid insurance, and we would credit cash. So this means that we spent money um, to buy insurance for the year. Cool. And deferred revenue. This would be like if we were Shania Twain or Billie Eilish, um, we would be getting cash from a thank you ticket sales and we would be crediting deferred revenue. And this deferred revenue account is a liability. It's saying, hey, I got your cash and I owe you a concert. That's what this deferred revenue liability means. 
All right, so then the second type, um, big broad category of adjusting entries are accruals. We have accrued expenses and accrued revenues. So again, um, this is for when the cash transaction does not match the economic reality. So accrued expenses, all right, let's take uh, an example right now for myself. So for myself right now, uh, we are not very handy around the house. So we are having somebody, we have a back deck that has um, like posts. So we need somebody to come out with a ladder and stain our back deck. And while they're at it, we're like fabulous. Also please do our porch. So they are, they have already, um, they're kind of like halfway through. So just imagine that in a couple days they'll have been done, but they won't have invoiced us yet. Well, we still need to record that expense. This is a deck expense, you know? And deck expense, whatever, staining expense, whatever, it was an expense. We could get into some nuances, maybe it extends the life of our deck. We're just gonna say it doesn't, we're gonna say it's aesthetic. Debit, deck expense, um, credit, um, accrued liabilities. So what this means is I've had the economic reality of incurring the expense. I need to reflect that for the users of my financial statements if Samantha Inc. produced financial statements on herself. She doesn't. She's me. I don't. Um, but then I need to reflect the fact that I do have this accrued liability. So I owe somebody money and they haven't invoiced me yet. If you want to skip a little bit ahead, when they do invoice me, I would then debit the accrued liability and liability and um, credit the accounts payable because now I actually have a human who has, um, who has said, hey, you owe me money. If you want to take this a little step further, so if we just take this, so that is the economic reality of the accrual. This is, I would reverse these two and book the accounts payable when they actually do invoice me. And then when I actually pay them, I can reverse or debit the accounts payable and credit cash. Now, want to see a magic trick? If they were to invoice me right away, then I wouldn't need an accrual liability. I would instead go, cool, debit deck expense, credit AP. So, and then when I pay them, I would just debit AP and credit cash. And hey, if this ended up being a cash transaction, the moment they finished the deck, they were like, yo, Sam, give me cash. Then I wouldn't even need an account payable or an accrual. It would just be straight cash. So really, when we're doing these types of adjusting entries, we are accounting for timing. There's a timing mismatch between cash and the economic reality of the transaction. If there wasn't a timing issue, well, our cash accounting would equal our accrual accounting. All right, back to the examples. So accrued revenues. This is when I have done work for somebody else and they have, and I have not um, submitted them um, something to be paid. So this is when I would want to say debit accrued uh, revenue. It would be really, I would probably put it to an account payable, quite honestly, um, because it's in my hands. I could create the invoice right away and where I would um, credit the Revenue, just straight up revenue. Hey, I did the work, you owe me money. Um, that said, I guess we could have an accounts or probably accrued revenue. We just typically don't because it's in our hands. The moment we book the revenue, we can just like make the invoice. You see a number of automated software systems um, that we end up just doing this um, in practicality, the AP. Why we need to accrue the expenses. Um, and have the accrued liability than the accounts payable is because we can't, uh, we don't have control over when somebody will actually make the invoice for us. Here we have control over when we can make an invoice and we should do so as soon as we book revenue. Um, but back to our example about the, that we ended last video on, if we're trucking across Canada or trucking across the United States and we are doing that for somebody else, yeah, maybe we'll have an accrued revenue because uh, we're not able to um, make that invoice at that time. So really for longer projects, we we could have, pardon me, and this would be AR, we really could have um, that accrued revenue. 
and it would likely um, just roll up on our financial statements. All right, so let's talk a bit more about prepaid expenses. So again, because I believe learning is repeated exposure, same or similar materials, I'm gonna leave these in, but because I did the debits and credits up above, I might go a little bit quicker. Again, look down below or to your supplemental materials folder for this video, and pardon me, and I will have these slides posted there. Sorry about that. Uh, my dad and I Skype uh, every every day uh, recently, so that was that. I'm gonna pause now, uh, take that call, and I'll be back soon. All right, so off the call with the dad. We'll see if I leave that in. I don't know. Um, why not? Why the heck not? Okay, cool. So prepaid expenses. Uh, as I mentioned previously, this is where we pay in advance, but we don't use the economic resource right away. So if we paid for one day of insurance, cool. We could debit uh, insurance expense, credit cash, and we could do that every single day. Oh dear goodness though. Um, that would just be so such a waste of time and accounting and just really not feasible. So we typically do um, in the insurance prepay a year in advance. Property tax uh, tends to be half and half, tends to be a year uh, paid for the expense that was accrued and a year for the um, property tax prepaid. It really just depends per the expense. So reading really does, reading and practice definitely does become uh, really pertinent when trying to maximize grades on an exam and maximize understanding through practice. So these prepaids tend to, um, expire or used um, as time passes, uh, although it might be some other elements for prepaid expenses, uh, but insurance is definitely the passage of time. Uh, supplies is an example of a prepaid expense. It just happens to be, you know, supplies that we would uh, debit supplies, credit uh, cash or accounts payable, depending on if we paid for it in cash or if we paid for it on account. So supplies are things like, um, like cleaning supplies that we would use to clean up our shop. We're not selling it, but we're using it. So the adjusting entry, as we saw before, when we are uh, using it, we would debit the expense and credit the prepaid asset. So if we looked in short form, that would be like debit um, insurance expense. And remember, this is the adjusting entry. You've already captured the economic reality of paying for this. And this would be crediting the prepaid insurance for the amount that you used up through the time. Uh, so cool, cool. Moving along. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Deferred revenue. So. When you receive cash before it is earned, remember this is like our Shania tickets, they would debit cash and they would credit deferred revenue. Well then, when they actually do the concert, that is when, so this is cash received and edited, um, credited. Uh, so then when uh, Shania or Billy Eilish actually does the concert, cool, we get to earn it. So we would reverse out that deferred liability. I say reverse out because if it was a credit to set up, we debit it and then that would reverse it out. And then we actually get to book our revenue here. And so we might earn all of our deferred revenue throughout the period. We might earn uh, none of it. If we earn none of it, then we leave it. We don't do this journal entry. Um, and then we might earn all of it, in which case we would reverse 100% of this deferred revenue here. Uh, and that would reflect, doo, 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 sorry, one time. Uh, the remaining balance of the liability is how much performance we still have outstanding at the end of the period. All right, time for some questions. More than just one here. Discussion uh, question. What, why are prepaid expenses a current asset? And why are deferred revenues typically a current liability? Pause this video, come back and let me know what you think. All right, so current assets are assets that are expected to be converted in cash or sold or used up in a year of the company's financial statements. Uh, therefore, a prepaid expense typically meets this definition um, because 
It was paid in advance with the anticipation that this prepaid amount will be used up within one year. Similarly, unearned revenue, except for some concerts maybe, or some items, like maybe, uh, you know, when we bought some uh, comedian tickets uh, pre-COVID and then COVID happened, you know, they kept our, our money, which is fine, and then just like deferred far into the future when the, con pardon me, when the com uh, comedy show would happen. So typically you prepay for something, um, they are expecting to give it to you within a year. Therefore, it matches the current liability definition that they are likely going to be satisfying that obligation within the year. Therefore, deferred revenues would also be typically classified as a current liability. All right, so this video has gotten to be a decent chunk of time. I'm gonna come back and do a couple examples in a learning objective number two uh, video example video. Talk to you soon.